Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah K. Ramsey here to talk about finding love and success after a toxic relationship so you can bounce back better. And I asked in my group, um, you know, what questions do you have as far as um, rebuilding your life after a toxic relationship? And someone asked about finding the will to go on or the will to start over or the will to... Um, basically the energy to create a new life, okay? So as always, I'm gonna kinda of give you guys a roundabout answer um, <laughs> because I know um, the reason you're asking the question is because so many other people would just say, well, just do it or just just put yourself out there, you know, whatever else it is. And um, so I want to give you a, it's a more complex question. So I want to give you a more well-rounded answer with as simple, terms as possible okay so um one couple different ways to think about it one is thinking about it in terms of what the person has already stolen from you okay so if they've stolen five years you know really the more time stuck in your house the more time that you um, focus on healing rather than growing the more times you're um life research project is narcissism the more times uh you know uh, your your hobbies are um researching narcissism obsessively or your your conversations with friends and family um all the conversations around them i had a uh, enrollment call today and the lady asked i asked her what she wanted in this next phase of her life and within two minutes she was already talking about him in therapy and and she had already left this person so it wasn't as even if they were hoping to reconcile but she was talking about him and therapy and his needs and his wants and you know his diagnosis. And I said, do you realize when I asked you what you wanted for your life, you started talking about his diagnosis? Toxic people train our brains to think about them rather than about ourselves. Okay? So the first thing you have to do is learn to retrain your brain to think about you and think about your wants and rediscover what those wants are okay now within my uh when i work with my uh private clients they have to make two lists for me one is a list of why they're wondrous women like what is wonderful about them because um, after a toxic relationship we have to reconnect with what's right with us for sure because toxic will put all this junk in our head of what's wrong with us we can't do anything they play the blame game they make everything our fault okay so the first thing you have to do is realize everything wasn't your fault and reconnect with what's right with you there's also a process of figuring out why you are the storm, right? There's a, um, a quote that I love and I hate, and it says, um, gosh, something about the devil uh, whispered in my ear, you can't withstand the storm, and I you know, yelled back, I am the storm. Um, and in my own life, I am the storm, and sometimes I get tired of being the storm right? I'm a human too. I know that um, you guys, I think uh, one of the things I'm going to do this week is get an interview with some people that have known me for um, a long time in my life and kind of talk to you guys about some of the struggles I went through and uh, when I wasn't all happy and smiley and life was good and I wasn't happily married and all those sorts of things um, because I haven't always been at this stage in my life, right? I, I have not always been at this stage in my life and I had a sticky note at my desk and it said keep up the fight and I looked at it and I just hated it because I was so tired of the fight I was so tired of fighting um at one point fighting um people in my life who uh I was always you know they were always fighting for me not to have boundaries fighting to get their way and it just um, my, my nature is not one of fighting, right? So um the when you know to say keep up the fight is hard sometimes right um and i know you guys understand that and i want to tell you that i understand that too so uh, part of it is learning how to get that fight back okay which you can really think i do not want the last five years to steal the next five years or the last 10 years to steal the next 10 years i don't want the person who ruined the last 20 years to ruin the next 20 years that is a really 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 important way to think about it okay also, when I ask women 
for my for my private clients about that Wonder Woman list or the I Am the Storm list. It is very apparent that they get their self esteem and they get their self worth from being needed. Their identity as a mother, their identity as a volunteer at their religious organization, their um, role as PTA mom, their role as nurse, their role as caretaker, their role as daughter. If, and they're all, everybody, they're all like, oh my gosh, I just love helping people. I just love helping people. It just fills my heart. It just fills my heart. It just fills my heart. And that's wonderful. I obviously love helping people too. But there's a difference in needing to be needed and teaching people how to save themselves. And the difference between the two of those things is like the difference between a trickle in your sink and Niagara Falls. I'm going to say them again. There's a difference between needing to be needed and um, teaching people to save themselves. And if you need to be needed, you will have toxic people in your life forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And you will always feel like you're in a fight to save your boundaries. You will always feel exhausted because everyone else, it, it'll feel like, um, almost like you're a, a gingerbread man and there's always people grabbing handfuls of you. Okay. Now, to rebuild a life you were excited about. I'm not asking you to be alone. I'm not asking you to be lonely. I'm not asking you any of those things. I'm asking you to reframe in your mind and focus on being connected rather than feeling needed. Focus on being connected rather than being needed. Connecting with another human, you know, two equal partners, not thinking, oh, how can I, um, not always having to think, how can I always help them? Um, I have a friend and she's a daughter of an alcoholic and she's always like trying to pay for everybody's meals or, oh, here, let me do that for you or let me take care of this for you. And at first it seems really nice, but she has a very long history of short relationships, including multiple marriages. A very long history of, mul- of very short relationships because she's always trying to jump in and save them. Okay? Save them from their financial stuff. Save them from their alcoholism. Save them from whatever it may be. Oh, here, let me get dinner. Oh, here, let me do that. Oh, no, I don't mind at all to, you know, to do that for you. And eventually, she's like, gosh, you know, they're a toxic person, you know, she gets a divorce or she, you know, gets a new friend or the friend uses her. Do you see how easily she could be used? And she doesn't realize she's setting herself up to need to be needed. You do not have to be lonely after a toxic relationship. Everyone out there is not toxic. Everyone out there is not toxic. Everyone out there is not toxic. But if you are going into relationships with this enormous need to be needed in order for you to feel loved, you're going to continue to attract toxic people. And to find your will and to rebuild healthy relationships after a toxic relationship, you've got to f- change your focus on not to be needed, but on connecting with that human. Connecting with another human in a wonderful way. Connecting through conversation. Connecting through partnership. Connecting through equality. Not connecting through needing to be needed. And your identity as needing to be needed. Um, We can feel very comfortable in a role as, you know, like moms, right? Where we're just always, oh, someone needs me to do this. And now I have to do this. And someone needs me to do this. And we can get um, a a bit addicted to the busyness. And um, that, that gingerbread character where someone's always trying to grab onto us and um, need us for something starts to feel like normal. But a healthy romantic partnership should not feel like that. A friendship should not feel like that. So focusing on that connection and learning the difference and what it means to have a connection with someone without uh, really setting ourselves up as their servant or setting ourselves up as 
oh, they just need me. Oh, oh, I got to do that because they need me. I got to do that because they need me. I got to do that because they need me. Um, that's we, we have historically been motivated that way, but it is a great way to continue being used by toxic people because toxic people absolutely see that quality in us and they think, ah, I can get them to do my stuff. And we think we can earn our right to have our turn. But yet, how, I really want you to ask yourself, is it working? How often have you been giving, 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 and someone said, oh, you know what, you've just been giving so much. Why don't, why, you know, why don't I give to you for a couple of years now? Or even a night, or a week, okay? And if that is the dynamic of your relationship, then you're always going to attract toxic relationships, toxic people, to, even if it's toxic friendships, okay? I hope that helps, and I hope you are having a great day and staying healthy amidst all this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.